God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not let them be afraid. With today's gospel, we find ourselves in two places. We are two Sundays away from Pentecost with the day of Ascension sandwiched in between them. And we are also back in Jerusalem at the Last Supper. Ascension Day, because it comes on a Thursday and is not a movable feast, is often referred to in passing. It used to be celebrated by diocesan altar guilds, which had special gatherings on Ascension Day to rededicate themselves to their ministry. Sadly, this has gone by the wayside, especially with the pandemic. The day of the Ascension was the day that Jesus finally left his disciples. He would no longer be with them in his bodily resurrected being. He would no longer be with them to teach them, to comfort them with his presence, no longer guiding them and challenging them in person. There was so much happening at that Last Supper in the upper room. Jesus had still much to share with his disciples, especially in John's gospel. Seven of John's 21 chapters deal with this supper. They had been traveling together for three years. They had three years of getting to know each other's foibles and strengths, three years to ask questions, three years of excitements and challenges. And now they are there together for a festival, a special meal, a meal at which they had no idea what was coming next, despite all that Jesus had told them. They had no idea what would happen later that night and the days to come. As they were gathered around that table eating, I wonder if they were waiting for Jesus to talk to them as he often did around meals. Did he wonder what he might say that night, that special night? Midway through the meal, things begin to change. Jesus gets up from the table. He tells them that he has come from God, that he is going to God. He takes a basin of water, kneels, takes a towel and kneels and washes their feet. We know this story. And he tells them that they are to be servants. He tells them that one of them will betray him. They ask one another, who could this be? Peter asked the one sitting next to Jesus to ask Jesus who that was. And Jesus tells the disciple, it is the one who will take the piece of bread I dip and hand to. We know that will be Judas Iscariot. As Judas takes the bread, Jesus leans towards him and says, do quickly what you are going to do. The others think Judas is leaving to get some more food or perhaps to give alms to the poor because he was the one that took care of the purse. Once Judas left, Jesus tells them he will be there with them only a little while longer. He tells them he is going somewhere that they cannot follow now, but that they will follow afterward. Peter speaks up asking, why can't he follow now? He says to Jesus, I will lay down my life for you. Jesus knowing looks at Peter and tells him that before the cock crows, Peter will deny him three times. We know this. We were there with Peter on Good Friday as the cock crowed. Peter with all his bravado, of the moment will be totally devastated. Jesus tells them, do not be troubled. I go to prepare a place for you. I go to prepare the way. And Thomas asks his question, how will we know the way? Jesus tells them, you know the way. He says to them, if you know me, you will also know my father. Philip says, show us the father. Jesus says, Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. He tells Philip then that if he cannot believe his word, 
than believe in the works that they all have seen. So he speaks to them then about love. It is the love Paul writes about in his letter to the Corinthians, which Joe spoke about last week, which I want to share again in part because it's important. It is a love that is patient and kind. It is a love that is not envious or boastful, a love that is not irritable or resentful, a love that bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. And this is the love that we are called to. Jesus tells them to not be afraid, that he is not going to leave them orphaned, though he is leaving them himself. They will not be alone. He is sending the advocate. He is sending the Holy Spirit to be with them, to teach them all they will need to know. The Spirit who will remind them of all they had learned from him. He says to them, peace, I leave with you my peace. I give you. And John goes on. That is a lot to have happen in one night, especially the night when everything broke loose, when all they had hoped for was shattered and they were stranded, left alone and afraid. Were they able to remember that meal? Or did they only begin to slowly remember when the dust settled? When they began to tell the stories to one another, did they piece together all that had happened that last night? When the spirit came, did the spirit help them remember all that Jesus had told them? We come to this table each Sunday, this table here which sits in the midst of all of us, a table simply set for a meal that we will share together. When we come to this table, we meet all of the events of that last night and all of the events that followed. They echo here in our minds and in our hearts. In fact, all the stories, all the events which took place throughout their history and all the events and stories of our history, they all echo and reverberate at this table each time we gather. We know that Jesus died the next day after that meal. We know that he was resurrected and spent time with his disciples afterwards. We know he left them telling them that they would not be left alone, just as we are not left alone. We know the story of the coming of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is in this place, reminding us of the story whenever we gather. I wonder if Jesus were here with us as we gather around this table today, I wonder what questions we would ask. What do we bring to the table? Do we bring our bravado? Do we bring our desperation? Do we bring our love? When Jesus responds to us, when he responds to our questions, and then when he asks us, will you follow me? Do we follow? Do we hesitate ever saying, not now, not yet. Oh, you mean me? Do we love as Jesus calls us to love? Are we patient? Are we kind? Our questions are important. And it is good to gather to remember and to celebrate each week. And it is important to remember that it is what we carry from this table out into the world that makes a difference. Do we carry and share God's message of love, forgiveness, and mercy? Do we? Wherever we find ourselves on our journeys, as we go out into the world from this table, we are never alone. To follow Jesus into the world is to know that we have a guide 
is to know that we have and we carry God's peace within us, God's love and God's peace. And may we, when the world is troubled and hard out there, may we remember that we have that love and that we have that peace within us. Amen.